For our first example, let's say that a 70 kilogram skier is skiing down a hill with an angle of inclination of 20 degrees. They have newly waxed skis, which have a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.05 with the snow. We're asked to solve for the skier's acceleration, assuming that they are not using their ski poles, but are instead skiing downhill under gravity's force alone. I'll begin by drawing a sketch. When I draw my sketch, I usually also include the given information to make sure that I have captured all the necessary information from the problem. Now that I have my sketch, I'll go ahead and represent the skier with a force diagram. Just like in our previous example, we saw that the normal force will always point perpendicular to the angle of the hill, and the gravitational force will always point straight down. So this is my Fn for normal force, and this is my Fg. Well, we can abbreviate like so. I also know that there is a force of kinetic friction pointing up the hill because the skater is traveling down the hill with the skier. I also know then I can draw in my components right here. This will be the x component of my, or I'm sorry, the y component of my gravity force, and this will be the this will be the x component of my gravity force. Again, defining my coordinate system like so, where x is positive down the hill and y is positive uh, perpendicular up the hill. I can go ahead and then redraw my force diagram, showing the angled force as components instead. I'll also take this time to write out the expressions for the x and y components of gravity, as well as the frictional force. I know that because fg was equal to mg, right, I know that my fgx would be mg times sine of theta. If you uh, forgot, this is theta right here, the same angle, so this is actually going to be 20 degrees as well, um, the same angle as the hill, and this fgx is the opposite side, so I'll use sine. Uh, I can also express the y component in terms of mg. In this case, it'll be the adjacent side to that angle, so it'd be mg cosine theta. I also know that the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. I do have that expression as well. Uh, but mind you, there is no expression for the normal force, so now I'm done. So now that I've drawn my sketch, I've drawn my force diagram, and I've redrawn my force diagram, showing the angled forces and expressing all of my forces in terms of variables that I have, I'm going to write out the sum of forces in both the x and y directions. So as always, I know that the sum of forces in the x direction will be equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration in the x direction, but I can also write out the sum of forces in the x direction as the x component of gravity minus the force of kinetic friction. I can express that as well as mg sine theta minus mu sub k times the normal force, right? And again, these were always equal to max. So now that I've expanded my sum of forces, I am looking for a. Now I could get a, but I don't know the normal force. So I'm going to look at the sum of forces in the y direction to see if I can get an expression for the normal force. I'll do that down here. The sum of the forces in the y direction will be equal to the normal force pointing up minus the y component of gravity. And that's going to be equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration in the y direction, which I know again in this case is zero because the object is not accelerating in the y direction. That means that the normal force minus the y component of gravity will be equal to zero, suggesting that the normal force is equal to fgy. So in this case, because fgy is mg cosine theta, then the normal force is also mg cosine theta. So I can take this expression now for the normal force, which we've seen now uh, twice, and I can substitute right here for the normal force in my x equation. That would give me an expression that mg sine theta minus mu sub k times mg cosine theta, right? Because the normal force was mg cosine theta, is equal to the mass of the ski skier times their acceleration in the x direction. Now, because I'm looking for ax, I'm pretty much almost done. I'm just going to divide both sides by m in order to get rid of the m over here. So I will have an expression that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to mg sine theta minus mu sub k times mg cosine theta, all over 
the mass of the skater. Notice I haven't plugged in any numbers yet. I always wait until the very end after I've done all of my algebra to start plugging in values to avoid extra calculations and potential rounding error. It's also important to see that you could potentially now cancel the mass because there is a mass in both terms in the numerator and there's mass in the denominator. You could factor out mass on the top and it would cancel with the mass in the denominator. Um, I'm going to leave it here in case that is confusing to anyone, but just know that algebraically you are allowed to cancel out the mass, which would make calculations simpler. Uh, if you were to plug in values, you would see right here that the acceleration in the x direction would be equal to 70 times 9.8 times sine of 20 minus 0 0.05 times the same thing, sine 70 times 9.8 times cosine 20. And that would all be over 70. Again, minding you that you could cancel the 70 if you wanted to. Then the acceleration in the x direction is equal to 2.89 meters per second squared downhill. It's important to note the direction of the acceleration. In this case, the skier is accelerating down the hill. So rather than, uh, you could make this positive then in this case, right? That would, or it would stay positive because down the hill is positive. If you were to assume that up the hill was positive, you would get a negative acceleration, which would, again, would make sense. Now let's take this acceleration and use it for some kinematics. By now, this should be a very familiar process. Um, if we already know the acceleration, which we were able to calculate using Newton's second law, then we can use that acceleration in kinematics to solve for things like displacement or velocities. In this case, we're looking for how far the skier will travel in 10 seconds if they start from rest. So I know that this means my initial velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. My time will be 10 seconds and how far is asking me to solve for my delta x or my horizontal displacement in this case uh, along the uh, hill so what i can do is i can look at my kinematic equations and choose one that has delta x in it and allows me to solve using the acceleration the initial velocity and the time i think i'll use this equation delta x equals the initial velocity multiplied by the time plus one half the acceleration multiplied by time squared. Because I already know all of my terms, I can go ahead and plug in values. This is going to be zero because they initially were at rest. That'll be equal to one half, 2.89, and then the time was 10 squared, which would be equal to one half times 2.89 times 100, which will give me a value of 144.5 meters. Uh, now, it's important to point out that um, we've done several problems now where we're using Newton's second law to solve for the acceleration, and then we use that acceleration for kinematics. But it's important to note that it could go uh, the opposite way as well. You could be given enough information from kinematics to solve for the acceleration, and then you could use that acceleration with Newton's second law to solve for the net force or the mass or whatever else you were looking for. So please keep in mind that the acceleration of an object bridges kinematics, and Newton's second law together. So uh, please be comfortable uh, going back and forth through this process in either direction.